Hello, welcome to Access. I'm Rob. Joining us is Holly. Hey, everybody. And Holly, this is uh, Persona 5 that you have been playing. Specifically, this is uh, six things you need to know about Persona 5 if this is your first Persona game, if you're a beginner. Yeah, so I made this video because so many people are asking, just like Final Fantasy, do I need to have played the others? I've never played one before, but this looks cool. So we thought this is the perfect video for you. I'm going to explain it. Yeah, we'll also have some cool facts in there even if you are a big persona yeah. fan so stick with us let's yes. go holly so this is number one is how the world works so you are a high school student in japan and it is very much fun if you've ever been to japan before you will get all the feels when you're watching this because it's just going to feel so familiar i mean even the art style it's a very classic anime art oh, style yeah. and it's like playing through an amazing anime yeah. graphic novel like a manga it looks amazingly slick and cool it is so despite there being like a whole world uh, like evil world to explore there is just this human world you know we're currently in uh in shibuya right now which is a real place in tokyo it is and like uh hachiko is there the the, the green train where the tourist information center is but really just... harajuku on the map at some point yes harajuku is there Ueno is there uh, just you're really you're gonna recognize it but that's the whole point of persona it's like how you have the real world and then the, the darkness in people's hearts that they hold and then the game is what pulls that out. It just looks so good. So this is just you exploring the real world at the moment? Yeah, I just thought I'd just show, just show us running around as a normal high school student, which is what we're supposed to be. With, Look, a, with a magic cat in your bag. Okay, I do have a magic cat in my bag. But if you've ever been to Japan, those vending machines. Vending machines, machines yep. Everywhere. Brilliant. You can buy anything in those vending machines. You People don't go to supermarkets in Japan, they just do their weekly shop at the local vending machine. But even this, That's like sweeping, like putting your Suica card through the machine, this is uh, Shinjuku. At one point, the game asks you to find the Ginza Line gate. Now, if you've ever been to Shinjuku, you know how hard that is. That's uh, sorry, Shibuya. Um, so, explain a, a little bit about what we're seeing here. This is your mobile phone, and this allows you to connect with your friends or your party members. Yeah, and that's kind of the whole point of Persona is connecting to people and developing relationships. So as part of exploring how the world works and, and making those friendships, you, know, you have a mobile phone and it'll ring, it'll go off, and sometimes you'll see a little, like, I am symbol in the corner. That means you've got text messages and you get to, you know, decide who you want to hang out with that day. Sometimes you even pre-plan things as well. And so point number two, Holly... Yeah, so point number two is skills. Now, this sounds really daft, but Persona is based around you developing as a person. And there are things that you can do within the game, and here we are working a part-time job in a flower shop right. that develops our kindness. Okay, and what is the benefit in the rest of the game to developing your kindness? Well, there are certain things that are sort of gated off until you reach a certain level. So, for example, at one point we want to talk to Makoto, but we can't talk to her because she's student class president. She's a right. smart lady. But until our knowledge reaches a certain point, okay. she would just be like, yeah, I don't want to hang out with you. So what clubs in Tokyo were restricting entry to only really kind people? Only people of level 10 kindness can come on in this place. Well, there is actually a, this option to work in a bar and you can't go in there until like your charm is at a certain level. Right, I see. So, um, and here we're on the train. Now, if you're lucky enough in the morning to get a seat on the train, you can read a book that you might have purchased when you were out in Shibuya. Uh, and then this can also help you. I think we're leveling up our charm. Excellent. All right. Yeah. And then that, again, will help us. You know, maybe you, you want to meet someone in the game. Maybe you want a relationship. And you need to have a charm level to be able to do that. And we're in class at the moment. I guess you can increase your knowledge in class. And Oh, my God. This... I think I get this. <laughs> I'm trying to remember this. Uh, I think I get this wrong. But, yeah, sometimes... I think I'll... it's Pope Joan, isn't it? Yes, it is Pope Joan. It's not Joan of Arc. Mm. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> if I got it right, Our survey said my incorrect. knowledge would have increased. Point number three is metaverse. Metaverse. Yes. What's the metaverse? That sounds exciting. It is exciting. So of course we've done the exploring the world. We're in Tokyo. We're a high school student. But this is what the game is based on: the metaverse. This is the darkness of people's hearts, and it's basically where the dungeons are. But look game. how cool you look in yeah. the dark place. Oh, yeah. man. No more school uniforms. Now it's like the Matrix. Yes, now everyone cooler than that. has cool costumes. We have nicknames. So I'm Joker. We've got Fox, Panther, 
it's just cool. But this is the dungeons, and they're all sort of based off different people who have different evil desires. Right. So the dungeon is formed around that person. So, for example, in this one, we're in a bank. Okay. But I'm not going to tell you why, because I'm not going to spoil no it. No story spoilers in this video. Um, but what I'm noticing is how you can you can use stealth in the dungeons. This is like a JRPG dungeon crawling bit. And look, you've used stealth and ambush this guy to give you a little bit of an advantage at the beginning of the battle. Yeah, so the whole point of the game is that you are the phantom thieves. You steal things off people. So the game is very mixed. You feel quite stealthy. You, can, you don't have to if you don't want to, but if you want to hide and ambush people to get an advantage in battle, great. There's like uh, a vision that you can use with L1 that helps you find things that you can steal okay. and then sell in the real world. But it's basically the metaverse is where you do all the cool stuff like this. And uh, you're using all your persona skills here. And man, everything about it just looks so... Slick. Stylish and well presented and well thought out. Like even the, we talked about before in a, in a previous persona video, just the, the screen that shows you how much experience and loot and items you got off the battle. Even that looks amazing. It really does. But the whole point of what we're doing is it's, it's a calendar based system in Persona. And I really need you to understand that. It's a calendar, like a normal yearly calendar. So every time you go to bed, a day passes. You have X number of days to complete the dungeon before something bad will happen. Right. So you can come in and out of this dungeon to like mess around in the real world as much as you want, but you have to have completed it by the deadline. And what happens if you don't? Well, then it depends on why you're in the dungeon. So okay. the person whose heart you're trying to steal will end up doing something to you. The game will explain all this when you play. But if you want to do the dungeon back to back in maybe three or four days, great. If you want to do a couple of levels, come out, mess around, level up some skills, hmm. you can do that. But the game will constantly be like, guys, we're running out of time. So it really puts you under a lot of time pressure. It is. It's you've got really to organize your life. Yeah, and organize when you're in... your studies around your dungeon crawling. It's so tough being cool, yeah, superhero, man. and a student. I've got homework to do, and I've got to steal this person's heart, man. God damn it, Rob. Okay, so what we're we talking about now? Point number four. Persona. Persona. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, I know right? we're talking about persona. <laughs> we're, talking we're talking about, about the personas you can get. The personas inside persona. One of them. Can we just talk about how one of the personas is a bike made of light? Yes, it is a motorbike. Uh, Johanna is actually Makoto's um, persona. So personas. The best way to explain this to you is a little bit like Pokemon, because most people play the Pokemon games. It's quite easy to wrap your head around. Each person has a persona they can use in battle. You as the main character can hold a certain amount, so you can actually switch between them in battle as you wish. Right. But all your allies have one. You just saw Arn use Carmen, for example, that's hers. What you can then do in battle is capture more personas okay. that you can then use in battle. And they're, they're your power. If you want to use ice attacks or lightning attacks, they're what your persona will, will give you in battle. Yeah, and you have different types of persona that have different skills. And also it's interesting how all the social elements we talked about in the previous points feed into your persona's power. So when yes. you level up things like kindness and you level up social like links with people, that makes your personas more powerful. Yeah, and we'll actually talk properly about social links in a little bit. But you can see here now when we level up, uh, Angel here has just learnt a new attack, but just like Pokemon, because all the slots are currently full. You've got to forget one. You've got to forget one to be able to learn it. Again, it's I know Pokemon is a thousand miles away for Persona if you're watching this and you are a fan, but I just think it's the best way to explain it. But there's so many. And you can do a bunch of, like, going deeper into Personas. You can fuse them together. and Oh, look, we're, oh, we're seeing that now. It's like I knew it was coming. <laughs> yes, this is called the Velvet Room. It's like an alternative reality inside an alternative reality. Now, in Persona 4, this was a limousine. In Persona 5, it's a prison. It is a prison. Now, what you do here is you take the Personas that you have caught and you confuse them to create new ones. Right. So it may be that you haven't been able to catch a particular Persona before, but this will now give you the option to craft it yourself. Okay. And you can only craft it up until your level. So, so I'm level 21. So you can only craft, so you can't craft that level 32 persona. Then. No. You're not strong enough. It will literally just come up and be like, ah, ah. Nope. Here, like this one I could do. And depending on how high your social links are, which we will come on to, 
Yes. That in, in that you know affects what kind of EXP boosts you can get when you fuse Persona and things like that. Exactly. And you can see here now I'm not going to be able to use that one because I'm just not strong enough. Which is a bit unfair. But this is how you get more powerful in the game, isn't it? You can you can create more powerful persona by fusing them. You can create persona that have a bunch of skills that you yeah. you know a combination of elemental skills maybe that you didn't have before. Like you can fuse a fire and a, a, a lightning yeah. persona together to create a persona that has both fire and lightning skills. Which is great. I think we did one on the live stream that we did where yeah. we had Phoenix and it basically had kick-ass abilities. And could we just talk about how dark this <laughs> is? <laughs> when you fuse persona together, what you do is you effectively kill the original persona yeah. with a guillotine. Yeah. Like this is the French Revolution or something, and then a new persona is born. And that's our new persona, and now we'll get a chance to level it up and take it with us. So point number five then. Social links. Social links, which we have touched upon. Um, explain to us, Holly, how how you, you know, take your social links further and how they feed into the rest of the game. Okay, this is not the same as skills. Skills are things like courage, kindness, and charm. Social links are the relationships you build with your friends, your teammates, and people in the world around you. When you build a social link, it's assigned an arcana, like a tarot card. Right. Best way to think about it. Mm -hmm. That tarot card might be death, or it might be the priestess or the emperor. When you're then fusing personas, if that persona is an empress persona, right. here we are with leveling up Morgana, she is the magician persona. Okay. Uh, so if we leveled up a Magician Persona now, it would get an XP boost because we are level four. In the Magician... In the Magician Arcana. Social link Arcana thing. So there will be a specific person you have a social link with who yep. relates to the Magician Arcana. And if you raise that social yes. link, Personas that you fuse in the Magician Arcana will be more powerful and will receive better boosts. Yeah, and this is where the game gets really complicated. So we've already talked about the fact that it's a calendar system and yep. day by day. So here, Yusuke wants to hang out. He texts us being like, hey, come and meet me. If you cancel that to do something else, you don't necessarily know when you'll next fit in being able to see him. Yeah. So it's also like time management. You know, if I see you use K instead of Arn, maybe that you use Arn more in battle. So not yeah. only does she level up the persona, but she gives you cool skills that you can use. Yeah. So maybe like, well, I'm not going to level up Ryuji because I don't use him in battle. And like, And this is one of the things we've met Arn to go out for the day. She's a model of... And, you know, by spending the day with her, we level up her, her social link. Yeah. Which is really, you do need to do them. Uh, and there's some fun stories to follow as well. I mean, just the act of hanging out with your friends is half the, uh, is half the fun of Persona. Yes. Because it's uh, so well written and the characters are so well realised. They are. Um, the, so there, your lover's arcana is now ranked seven. You've been hanging out with Arn quite a lot, it seems. I like Arn. I think she's cool. She, she might be... Uh... She might be Persona Waifu. So uh, point number six. This is our final point, Holly, mm. that we're going to be talking about. What is this? This is the battle the system. The battle system, which is so awesome and cool. And you know, when people think about JRPG turn-based battle systems, sometimes just saying that turns them off. Yeah. But look how awesome this is. Come on. So cool. So first of all, you can choose. You can control everybody at once, or you can turn your teammates to being auto battle. Right. I like to control everybody separately because I'm a control freak. Old school. Like and I'm old an... school Final Fantasy games. You yeah. get to decide what everybody does all the time. So when you're in battle, you get uh, the option to sort of scan and see what they're weak to. You can call up your persona and use their attacks. You can do physical attacks. Everybody has a gun and a different type of gun. And some are weaker to gun attacks. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about that. You can then do, you know, your guard, throw out items. And then you've also got special moves as well. It's a pretty, it's, it's got a lot to it and it's fun. It's like uh, the core of it is like a, a rock, paper, scissors kind of weakness, elemental weakness system, but there's so much bolted onto that. Yeah. Um, so for instance, when you knock someone, you knock a monster down, if you use an attack that it's weak against like this, you'll auto you, you automatically get a second go. Yeah. So if you do it right, you can take down entire teams of enemies by effectively using moves that they're weak against, and they won't even get a look in. No, if it's you're amazing. good about it. Um, so you can see there previously exactly as you were saying. You know, we got a critical, therefore we got to keep going. Hold up. Hold up. I love this. Please tell me you've done an all-out attack here. Yes, yeah, it's my favourite bit. Look how good it looks. So if you have one enemy and you've managed to make them uh, a weak attack. Or if you manage to make all enemies weak at once, 
Or if an enemy, you just you just managed to, you know, get it. Knock it on the floor, maybe with a critical hit or something, yeah. You get this all-out attack mode, which is quite frankly ridiculous. You can do the really slick all-out attack, or you can try and talk to it and convince it to become one of your personas. And that is how you catch personas. And that is how you catch personas in battle. This guy's an ass. <laughs> He's not weak to anything. Now, because we've leveled up on social link, she gets this attack in battle. Right, the leave it to me, I'm going to take care of everything and kick its ass attack. Critical hit, hold up, it's time to it's beautiful, take isn't it? him down. So we're going to try and talk to this one. Okay, so we're instead of doing the all-out attack, we're asking this hey. monster to join us. Hey, hey do you, you want to be on my team? Well, well, I, I think I get it right. I can't remember. I sent you a lot of footage. <laughs> But um, this is how you get personas. So you have to think in the battle. So for example, we won't get if we do take this persona, we won't get any XP because we haven't really killed it. We failed, so we just now. Nah, I'm just you didn't kill like it. what you said. Forget it. Fine then, man. I didn't like the fact that you don't like what I said, so we're going to kill you. Well, he's he's had a go at you there. Yeah, that rampage got a critical hit. is not pleasant. So he gets another go for that critical yeah, hit. He Bang. Queen down. Oh man. No, nope, she's back up. Come on. Finish him off. Yeah. I love her persona. On the light bike. Bang. Oosh. And you're dead. And look how slick this is. Yeah. <sighs> Man, everything about this game is beautifully presented. It's achingly cool. And I cannot wait to get my hands on it. So there we go. There's a, a brief look at Persona 5. We've already got a, a live stream that we've done, which you should be able to watch on the channel yeah. now if you want to see more in depth. But um, that is uh, six things you need to know about Persona 5 if this is going to be your first Persona game. Um, so please do let us know in the comments if you're going to be picking up Persona, if you're excited for it. I certainly am. Yep. And uh, please do subscribe to the channel because we may have more videos on Persona 5 coming up. Yeah.